Well, Paul Volcker absolutely destroyed my real estate portfolio, destroyed my business too. I was a very young man. I lost absolutely everything. This would have been in a, you know, in the early 80s. I was a product of that 1981 to 82 double recession. That's when Paul Volcker let up the gas and decided that uh, inflation was done. And then he came back and had to do it again. And it just absolutely, literally destroyed my business, my real estate practice, all my holdings. We just, I lost absolutely everything. I was a very young man. I was really, very really fortunate that uh, I had a wife that uh, understood what was going on here. So I do want to tell you that this guy right there, he destroyed me. He raised interest rates to the point where everybody stopped. Now, this was in Chicago in the, in the early 80s. There were 60,000 journeymen electricians out of work. Steel mills were closing down. Bethlehem Steel went down. Republic Steel. These had thousands and thousands and thousands of, uh, of uh, employees. And, of course, uh, auto, auto was affected. Uh, auto plants were closing down. Retail closed down. Builders were losing money left and right. I remember this. I literally lost virtually everything I own. It was, uh, it was an absolute. I told my wife I would never, ever allow this to happen to me again. And uh, we've come through a couple others. So it was one of the first uh, really major downturns that I encountered. And it was just absolutely awful. I know exactly what uh, can happen. So... I don't want that to happen. So let me go to my next slide and let's just talk about this. I'm going to open this up a little bit so that you can see this a little bit. So I don't know if you can really see this very, very well. So um, this is the Federal Reserve Electronic Data System. I've talked about this many, many times. Everyone can go into it. Just uh, Google Fred. They have amazing data. This is the median home sales that we've had uh, across the United States. Now, my cursor may or may not work, but you can see... Uh, this one uh, kind of in the middle here uh, in 1980, uh, or I'm sorry, 2005, you can see a peak. And then we had this big band. That was the recession of 2008. And you can see where prices came down. But look how they went up. It was an amazing ride. We thought that uh, prices had just gone uh, crazy. And then you come down to the end here and look at the spike. Look at this spike. Now, I have a couple other slides. If you follow my work, oh, by the way, if you like my work, uh, uh, YouTube just loves the fact if you subscribe or, and like this. Their, their algorithms are set for that, so that would really help me out if you did that. But if you go back to my, my prior um, YouTubes, we talk about this spike. You can see the spike in virtually every asset class. This is where the liquidity went in, and it drove prices crazy. So I'm going to tell you, you can see this spike. Let me go to my, my next one, and let's just take a look at this spike so you can see it even better. But the reason I put this in is because it is worse than what it was in uh, 2005 and 2006, where it really went crazy. It's repeating again. My concern, of course, is that we have another 2008 uh, staring us in the face. It does take a while. I'm going to tell you, uh, I went, I've went. i gone through these before. This will be like my third or fourth one I've gone through. They're all the same. There's a lot of denial. A lot of denial. Nobody wants to uh, Nobody wants to believe that that's actually happening. But look at this. So I've blown this up. You can do this also with, with Federal Reserve Electronic Data. So it, we peaked in the Q4 of 2022 uh, as the median home sales across the United States at $479,500. And right now, uh, we have a data, so we're in Q3 of 2023. We've got Q2 of 2022, and you can see that drop has come down to uh, uh, 416,100. So we have had a significant drop in, uh, in home prices. This will continue. So if we continue back and just take a look at this, you can see what happened. If you were around in 2008, uh, 2009, a lot of lot of turmoil. So uh, if you follow my work, we, we always talk about uh, two peaks, which is like a double top in uh, in the stocks. And that uh, the first peak is the one that's most important. And that would have come in at uh, March of 2022. And uh, right, th right before then, it was just crazy. Everyone remembers that. You know, we'd have 60, 70 showings on a property in two or three days. You'd have 10 offers on a property. Everybody trying to outbid each other. First time home buyers are bidding ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars over uh, over ask. I've even heard stories of eighty thousand dollars over ask, 
And of course, uh, the rest will be history. So you can see that. So we peaked and we're coming down. The question is, uh, is this a correction or is this a, uh, uh, a completion of the cycle? Uh, if you've been following my work, you know that I think that uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty clear to me that I think we've got a cycle completion. So I put this in because here is a, uh, this is the PPI. You can literally see this. So we've talked about the fact that liquidity is being removed from the market by the Federal Reserve. Not only are they raising interest rates, but they're taking out all the fuel and they're taking it off out at a historic, historic um, pace. So when there's no fuel in the economy, there's no money to do anything. I mean, you can't do projects. The builders can't scrape dirt and start building homes. Uh, uh, manufacturers uh, start having trouble with their cash flow issues. Uh, all the uh, startups start having problems because, uh, you know, a startup, if you have 10, you hope one of them is going to go well, but you need money, you need capital, get these going. Uh, you're going to see businesses having trouble with their with their uh, uh, credit lines. Uh, we're already seeing that the auto loans are getting, being declined. We're seeing declines in, in uh, credit cards. So it's happening. And let me just go back to that slide so you can see. Uh, you can see that it's a PPI. That's a producer price index. This is just dropping. It's actually coming below zero now. But I put this here because you can see this enormous, enormous bubble. This is across all asset classes, just about everything. You can see that. Let me go to my next slide and let's just look at that. Now, a lot has been said what's going on with the builders. And look, we have I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. We've got builders like crazy. They have had a field day since really last November. And I'm going to tell you, you know what happened last November? They got scared. They got really, really scared. And they're to the point they want to get rid of those properties. Now, if you recall in 2007, 2008, 2009, <laughs> builders dropped like rocks. Companies that have been in business for a really long time lost everything they had. Their land banks sank them down. We've had some really unique things. You can follow my videos. Again, we've been talking about the fact that uh, Builders sold hundreds, if not thousands of properties, and they couldn't get them up. They had shortages of roof tiles. They had shortages of windows. They had shortages of glass. They couldn't get air conditioners. They couldn't get floor tile. They couldn't get labor. And consequently, something that should have taken three, four, five months to complete is taking 18 months. And the rest is history. Interest rates have doubled. And the people that they bought this house, they built this house for, they can't buy it. So the builders got tons of specs and they're scared to death. They are not spec builders. You know, they built these four people and uh, they don't they don't want to go down. I mean, they have a long memory and they're looking at these things. And they're saying, wow. So they are being very, very aggressive. Let me go back to the slide so we can take a look at this. Now you can see they're building like crazy. And I'm going to tell you in my business, they've raised they've raised uh, realtors commissions. They have given incentives. They're buying interest rates down. They're buying appliance packages they're putting in landscape they're putting in uh draperies it's 100 percent turnkey so they've got all the appliance packages in they're going to put in the uh, the front yard backyard landscaping they're doing some trees they're going to come in and put window treatments in they are building like crazy they want to close these things out they want to get out of their land banks and i want to tell you there's look at the sales you can see it's selling like crazy, but there's no new permits. They're trying not to, they're trying to build these things out. They don't want to, they don't want to have specs. They're not a spec builder. It's been a problem for these guys. Let me go on the next slide. So let's just talk about this. Now here's my timing model. I want you to take a close look at this. This has been very, very, very accurate. That's been very, very good. So correctly, uh, it correctly predicted that the two, uh, uh, short uh, corrections that we had and we uh, identified them as corrections not as um not as uh completions and they came in right on time they came with our market our uh, timing model was uh, incredibly accurate and we've seen the explosive phase you can see that in the you can see that in the very first uh, slide it uh, it's an explosive phase it goes up this is where you have fomo everybody is just crazy to buy want to buy everything. You can see that as clear as a bell. You can also see that we're starting to peak. Now, this is stylized. The first peak came in March of 2022. Now, some people say it was April 2022. I'm not going to I'm not going to argue. Each one of these is regional, of course. 
But we think that the, the uh, second peak is forming now and we are going to complete. So I think we're in this jeopardy position right here. So what exactly do you do? I mean, we're, we're here. If you have a, uh, if you have a need for a house uh, and you're a first time home buyer, those are the ones that are most concerned about people are putting capital into it. You need to assess the fact that uh, how long do we have? If you only have a one or two years that you're going to be here in Phoenix and you might, you're subject to transfer, you're going to go back to, uh, uh, Washington or New York, or you're going to go to Dallas, uh, probably want to rent. Uh, I do believe that we're going to complete that cycle and we are going to see a huge uh, turn up again in uh, housing and anything tangible. I, I think inflation personally on our, on, our, on our consultations, we think inflation is coming back. And um, I think that tangibles are going to do really well. But you will have to suffer through this downturn. And I think this could be a pretty brutal downturn. We've gone up pretty significantly. Um, I think we can come down pretty significantly as well, particularly in light of the fact that interest rates, of course, have doubled. Let me go to my next slide here. And here's our current uh, president of the Federal Reserve, uh, chairman of the uh, Federal Reserve is, of course, Jerome Powell. He is a student of uh, Paul Volcker. He thinks Paul Volcker was an absolute uh, American hero. And he wants to do the same uh, thing as Paul Volcker because he's seen inflation come to it's it's exact it's an exact same copy. Uh, all, only worse. It, it's it's like uh it's like 1979 and 80 on steroids, and he has to put a stop to it because they put in trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of liquidity. Every every asset class popped. And of course, they have to take that liquidity out. And they've done that by, I just showed you the liquidities. I mean, they're, they're taking out money left and right. And this is what's causing, uh, you're seeing banks fail because they haven't got any cash. And of course, we've been talking about the fact that uh, hotels and, and office uh, buildings are being given back by uh, REITs uh, that uh, they can't afford it. Uh, and interest rates are, are, are very, very uh, onerous. And here's the problem with interest rates is that we have a lag time with interest rates. So we're just now feeling it. So even when the, when the Federal Reserve takes its foot off the gas, that lag is just going to keep pushing us. So um, I think we are all in jeopardy here. I think we're going to have an incredible buying opportunity. Just an absolutely unbelievable generational wealth will be made, uh, but not quite yet. So uh, what do we do? I think Jerry Powell is probably not going to take, he's not certainly not going to pivot. I don't, I don't see a pivot because he doesn't want in, in 80 and 82, Volcker took his foot off the gas and in 80, it, he took his foot off the gas and it came right back and he had to really slam it hard in 82. So that's where we had the double recession. And it, it was just, it was just absolutely awful, just awful. So what, what do you do? So I'm going to tell you, here's some hedging, and we're going to put our uh, thinking caps on. And I'm going to tell you, I wish I would have done this uh, when I first put my portfolio together. Now, when you're asking me, my portfolio is free and clear. I am an income investor. No matter what happens, I will have income coming in. We've kept our lives. We have very little debt. I have a good cash position. And in the last couple of, of these completions, Rent doesn't suffer too terribly much. You know, you might have a, maybe have a 5%. Now, if you're in some of the endangered cities, you could have some real problems. You know, as your population leaves and, and comes to Florida, Texas, and Arizona, you could have some problems here in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we have uh, a shortage of homes. It's going to be accentuated uh, when we start seeing the recession become in earnest, because I'll tell you, that people will vote with their feet. They will, uh, they'll leave Chicago. They're going to leave Seattle. They're going to leave Portland. We're seeing this already. They're going to get out of New York. Uh, New York City is in, is in major, major trouble. You can see they've way overbuilt uh, in offices and you're going to have, you're going to have a destruction of the inner city. Now they may come back, but in the meantime, it's just again, going to take time and people are going to migrate. They're going to migrate to Florida, Texas, and Arizona. So we're probably going to have less uh, problems than others. So, uh, but we need to prepare. So let me just go to my, uh, my next slide here and let's just talk about this. Uh, let me just tell you, I need to do a disclaimer. I'm going to be talking about a strategy that uh, most people don't use. We're going to talk about using a, an integrated asset approach. So we're going to use another uh, asset to protect our asset. 
So what we need to try and do is protect our real estate portfolio on the downside. And I'm going to talk about this. I am not an expert in this. So before you're going to do this, I'm going to tell you, I am going to put a huge, enormous uh, disclaimer on here because you could have, I, I've never tested this uh, for myself. I think it's a good one. I, I would recommend that most of my investors and you talk to your financial advisors that are in the, uh, you know, in the equities positions. And they should be able to help you along with this and just kind of confirm whether this is good enough for you because it is an integrated asset approach. It's how to protect your real estate holdings from a catastrophic market decline. This is my, my major concern. I've got a couple ideas. Uh, before we go on, you do need to, I'm going to tell you, you need to, to talk to your financial advisors to get this done. So let me just go to my next slide here and let's just talk about what I think. So again, I cannot stress this again. I am not a, uh, I'm an expert in real estate. I am not an expert in equities. I have a good understanding of it, but I am not a, uh, I am not an expert in, in, uh, in, in uh, what I'm going to recommend would be, uh, uh, puts and so options and maybe some uh, shorting some positions in some of the builders and try and find a proxy that works for you. Find a proxy for the real estate industry and protect yourself on a downside. So, in a, in a nutshell, the uh, the theory is and the and the strategy is that we're going to buy a financial instrument that's going to protect us in the financial markets and the equity markets for a downturn in the real estate market. And my recommendation is, let me just go to my next slide here and see if we can take a look at that. And uh, let's just discuss that. So a hedge is in finance to take an, an offsetting position in an asset or investment that reduces the price risk of an existing position. That's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to find something that uh, reduces the risk of adverse price movements. Because I think we have, we're at risk of a catastrophic loss. On that. And rather than sell your portfolio, I would say you probably need to uh, uh, maybe just hedge it. So again, talk to your financial advisor. I know most of my, uh, I have some very, very sophisticated investors. You just need to talk to your your uh, uh, financial advisors. You know, a lot of us have, have financial advisors with uh, some of the major houses. Now I am using Lennar because Lennar has had one heck of a huge run up in the last three or four months. That is because the builders are doing absolutely everything they possibly can to get rid of their inventory. They don't want this inventory. And because of that, they've had some pretty good sales. Uh, and, and again, now these things change every day. So this is good when I put this on. I, I think I put the date on uh, just a, a, a little bit ago. Uh, but it's going to change. Let me just tell you, it, let me just repeat this. I'm, this is a CYA for me. So don't, don't yell at me if this doesn't work. Um, but I think that if you look at this, uh, I, I'm using uh, Lennar. You could use maybe Toll Brothers. You could also use the uh, housing index. But if you took some shorter positions on this and some puts, I think that uh, Lennar has run up really, really uh, amazingly. And this is the long-term chart. You can see that in uh, November of, of uh, 2008, they just were just down in the dumps. $5.79. I think they're about 125 right now. So they have a long ways they could possibly go. I mean, this is a historical chart. Could they go down that low? That would be pretty amazing if they did. But is it possible? Yes. It's more possible that they could lose 30, 40, or 50% uh, in, a, in a catastrophic downturn because they would suffer the same as us in the in the uh, port, in our portfolios. So currently, I just got this. I think this is probably Friday's chart. It's going to change. They were at $125. You can buy puts on these fairly inexpensive. I think that one says it's like $5.67 thereabouts. So you can buy 100, put, you know, 100 puts, which is one contract, for $567 at, uh, I think that's $115. So you would start earning money if the stock went by one uh, below 115. You can make it 110. There's a couple of different positions for you. But if the stock went down to, uh, uh, took a 30% loss and went down into the 80s, this would help offset your loss in uh, in the real estate, uh, capital gains on real estate, the, the value of your real estate. Now, to me, I'm not terribly, terribly concerned because we are really long-term investors. And most of my clients need this as income. And personally, I don't think that income is going to be too terribly impacted, particularly here in Florida, Texas, or Arizona. Particularly here in Arizona, uh, we have a lot of demand for rentals. 
Uh, so our cash flow will probably stay fairly significantly uh, where it's at. However, if you need to sell something, this is telling you it's time to sell. This is there's no if, ands, or buts about it. If if you've got something that you've been thinking I want to sell, by golly, it's time to get that thing sold. Let, let's let's get that out. Uh, but we're talking about protecting. Maybe have a million, two million, a ten million dollar portfolio. You can put some of this. And I would work this out with your um, with your financial advisor and see what the cost is and what what your cost uh, basis would be because these are subject to loss. It's possible you could lose money on this. You can make money. You can also lose money. The idea is to keep a hedge out there. I don't think you need a hedge for much more than maybe 24 months. 18, 18 to 30 months is probably all you need it for. So you can do these in six-month increments very, very nominally and, and get this done for yourself. Again, keep in mind, I am not a, a finance, I am not an equities guy, and I have very limited knowledge about puts, but the theory should hold. Now, again, there are ETFs that are structured to go inverse of the housing industry. Now, these also have options inside there, so they, they uh, deteriorate over time. So these are not long holds. So again, you need to talk to your financial advisor to see if this is suitable for you. Remember, it's suitable. Is this suitable for you? And see if that if that works. So there are there's so, several uh, ETFs that you can look at. Now, I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. We have a huge portfolio. I represent many, many investors. A lot of my investors really, really are depending on getting this cash flow. I think the cash flow is going to be fine. I do think that we're going to have a uh, incredibly uh, good market coming. I think we're all going to make a lot of money uh, in probably uh, 18 to, 20, to 30 months. I think my business is going to go be really, really good. So the last couple of times that this has happened to me, We've had prices come down because I think that we're pretty fully valued. These properties are pretty fairly expensive. We've got everything in, a, in the world going against us. We've got liquidity issues. We've got higher interest rates. Uh, we're starting to see that maybe employment isn't as good as we thought it was going to be. Uh, we're seeing underwriting getting uh, tougher and tougher. And, they're, uh, and, and interest rates are making home payments really, really difficult. So just the simple rent-to-own index is uh, is off the chart, so it's actually it's actually cheaper for you to rent rather than to own. These are all bad things for uh, the future. They're just out of whack, so we just need to get them back into into balance, and that will come. Uh, however, always, always, always remember this: that the pendulum always goes beyond where it should stop, and when because of that, it just opens up opportunities for us. So we have a phenomenal opportunity coming for us. We need to make sure we preserve our cash. This is what we're really good at. We have a big cash position. Preserve your credit rating. So pay your bills. You know, get out of debt. You know, credit cards are running in 23 to 25%. How can we possibly pay that? So pay them off each and every month. I know we need that. You know, we expense our lives out through our credit cards. We just pay them off at the end of the, at the end of the month. And if you don't need to buy something, don't buy it. We're going to get better pricing as they come along. Now I showed you my uh, I showed you my uh, uh, contact information here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here. We do business uh, everywhere. So if I can help in any way, if you want to brainstorm with me, if you want to uh, uh, comment, we always love your comments. We love you to 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 send us a comment and give us your thoughts. My very very best to you guys. Bye bye now.